Check the description for the following discount codes. I know a few of you have been waiting for me to compare AirLink on the Quest 2 to Virtual Desktop uh, and just give you my thoughts on which one I prefer and why, if I even have a preference. Um, and here's your real answer straight away. There is basically no difference. If you set them both at the same bit rate, I tried 125, which is what I use. Um, I could not tell a difference between running virtual desktop and the Oculus Air Link. They both worked flawlessly, basically. Now there are some differences and some pros and cons which we'll get into, but for the most part, you could use either and you'll be perfectly happy, which is, which is really, really good. I am a little surprised that Oculus or Facebook didn't go the route of creating a dedicated Wi-Fi dongle for you to plug into maybe a USB-C port uh, on the PC or even an Ethernet port to eliminate the possibility of every single person on the planet having a different router set up, a different Wi-Fi network at home. And there being all sorts of potential sort of hiccups and, and latency issues and, and packet dropouts across all these millions of possibilities. So I am quite surprised they've just gone for the, the software option and just said, yep, there you go, guys, we're going to let you do it. I mean, it's, it's good that they have because it means it's free. And for those of us that have already jumped through the hoops of buying a dedicated router to use only for connecting to our Quest 2s to play over the air, which is still what you need to do if you want the best experience, I really encourage you to buy a dedicated router just so the only device on that channel on that frequency is the quest and it's in the same room as your quest now if you've already got wi-fi which we all have if you've got at least a five gigahertz connection you may as well try it because it costs nothing and you might be lucky and find that you haven't got much interference and you get a, a playable experience anyway in which case you don't need to buy a dedicated router but um i think for a lot of us running our standard ISP routers with a load of other devices connected to it in our homes, all on the same channels, we're, we're going to get some, some hiccups and it's not going to be the smoothest. But anyway, that's all been spoke about in many other videos. So today is just talking about different things too. First of all, I suppose I should just tell you how to get it working, which is pretty simple. First of all, you want to load up your Oculus software and make sure you've got the latest version, which at the time of recording, you go under your general tab and scroll down to the bottom is version 28, um, 00222, blah, 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 blah. Make sure you've got that. Then go to your beta tab and you'll see the air link option at the bottom there. And you can just literally press the button and it will turn it on. Now this does only stay on for 24 hours. If it hasn't been used, it will default to being off again. Now, once you've done that, you need to load up, you, you have to do that. So basically, if you don't use it every day, you'll need to do that every time you fire it up. Not a big deal. Load the Oculus software, click beta, click air link. Three clicks, no, no big deal. Then what you need to do is go into your Oculus Quest 2 itself, and you need to go down to the experimental features, and of course, enable air link there. Now this only does need to be this only does need to be done once. Yes, it does. Does it does even sound like the right word? You only need to do this once. This does remember uh, that you've enabled Oculus Air Link. And so from this moment on, you will now see it in your quick launch settings tab next to a Guardian and next to your Wi-Fi and below your brightness and volume um, sliders. And that'll be there all the time. So you click that and then it should show you your PC's name over your network. Um, and then you just pair to it, and that's it. You're good to go. From that moment on, your Oculus Quest 2 is now connected to your PC's Oculus software over the air. Now, the difference is between this and virtual desktop. This is really why we're here today. The first and I'm gonna say most important difference is that because we're now doing this natively, via Oculus software, we have available to us the Oculus ASW algorithm, which helps smooth out micro stutters and drops in frame rate by sort of guessing at what frame should be 
there at the point where we get a stutter. Um, let me just turn the screen capture off from earlier. And so prior to this, if we just use virtual desktop, we had it through Steam VR when we're playing Steam VR games, but when we played Oculus games using the Oculus SDK, this ASW, this this um, sort of guessing of frames to make it make it smoother experience wasn't available to us. So you would get more micro stuttering, or you would have to turn your in-game settings down to make sure your PC ran just that little bit smoother to either eliminate them completely or minimize them. So now we've got that, it means not only does our Steam games run as smooth as they would do um, over a wired connection, now our native Oculus games do as well. And to me, that's a big deal. There's also other things that come into play here. Not every game worked with virtual desktop and some games wouldn't work at all. Other games would just run really badly. Some games would have sort of individual bugs to each game. And a good example of this is one of my favorite games I like to play with Katie multiplayer is Zero Calibre. Now the Oculus version runs, I'm gonna say about 25 to 30% smoother and faster than what the Steam version does. So you would naturally wanna play and load up the Oculus version. Well, that was all well and good when you play wired, but when I use virtual desktop, there is a bug with Zero Calibre and you can no longer get onto the multiplayer servers. It just says servers not found or something pretty basic like that. And the, the only way around it was to load the Steam VR version of the game, um, which I, had, I actually bought, I ended up buying four copies, two Oculus copies, two Steam copies of Zero Calibre. Um, so you load the Steam VR version and that then allows you to see the multiplayer servers, which is great. But then there's a further bug with the Steam VR version where the left-hand menu button that's supposed to bring up the in-game menu in, in Zero Calibre just brought up the Oculus menu. So you couldn't go into the in-game menu and adjust any settings or even exit the game properly. So you had to then remap the controls to be able to do that. And it's like, this is some serious hoops we're jumping through just to be able to play a game online. And it's a combination of using Virtual Desktop, which is a third party application, um, you know, sort of circumventing the wired connection that we had at the time. Um, and, you know, and, and an issue with, with the game Zero Calibre itself and the difference between Steam VR and Oculus SDKs all combining together to cause this really niche problem. So now, because Oculus Air Link is a native Oculus connection, you just load up Zero Calibre over Airlink, the servers are available, the game runs 25, 30% faster than it does through Steam. You can, I can go from medium to high on my PC and on Katie's one downstairs with the 1080 Ti, I can go from low to medium. And you know, everything just looks and plays so much better. So to me, being able to natively use Oculus software now and the ASW there just really makes a huge difference. Uh, other differences between this and virtual desktop, there isn't very much in the way of options to adjust um, with Oculus Air Link. There's the bit rate, I think one or two others, nothing of any real excitement. Um, but with virtual desktop, there's quite a whole assortment of options that we can play with there. Everything from the rendering resolution, you know, to the bit rate, to enhancing the vibrancy of the colors and things like this. So if you're a bit more of a tweaker, you may still like to play with virtual desktop, but and I kind of am, but I tweak until I get things where I want them and then I leave them. So with Airlink at the moment, I, there's nothing I really need to tweak. I've set my bit rate to match what I was using in virtual desktop um, for the same codec. And it looks and plays just the same. I mean, I would say the sort of vibrancy of the colors, if you've got that ticked in virtual desktop, it does look a touch more vibrant, but that's an option we don't have in Airlink. But for me, I couldn't care less about that compared to being able to have ASW um, asynchronous time warp is what it actually stands for, um, or asynchronous warp, uh, to have that working for a smoother experience and to be able to natively run Oculus titles properly and you know not have those problems like I experienced with Zero Calibre, not being able to log onto the servers, uh, it running slower using the Steam VR version. I think Dirt Rally 2 is another game that runs slightly better using the Oculus SDK. And again, when you try and do it with virtual desktop, 
you can't use the Oculus SDK, at least not in my testing. I had to load the Steam VR version, otherwise it wouldn't work. Um, but for me, I think AirLink is now going to be my default way to play um, all my PC VR titles over a wireless connection. You know, on the on the Quest here, it works well. It works better than virtual desktop in reality because we have the ASW. Um, working for Oculus titles, whereas before we only had Steam VR version of that, which doesn't do anything for Oculus titles. And now we have the bugs that are no longer there, you know, with those games that didn't work with virtual desktop. Now, there may be some titles that don't play well with Air Link. Obviously, I haven't tried every single PC VR game <laughs> to test this out. So maybe there will be a list that grows of titles that don't work with Air Link. But because of the way they've integrated it into the Oculus software, I can't see that being the case. You know, it's the same as Link plugging a cable in. You know, you're, you're using the Oculus software for what it's supposed to do, whereas Virtual Desktop was third party, and whilst it was great and it's kept us all going until now, I think personally, Air Link will be the one that I go for most of the time. You know, unless something doesn't work and then I'll try it on Virtual Desktop. If you lot have been having a play already, and you found some problems with AirLink or some things that don't work and that do in virtual desktop, by all means, let us know in the comment because I would like to know. Um, and also, if there's any other pluses or minuses that you guys have all discovered that I yet haven't. I've probably only used it for maybe four hours, so not a huge amount of testing you know, to, uh, to play with. And as I say, I can't try every game. But that was long enough for me to go back and forward between the two over quite a few different titles and compare the performance and the visuals, you know, and the, the, the latency and the responsiveness. And it's good, you know, they've, they've, they've done a decent job. As I say, I am surprised they haven't gone for a proprietary dongle to eliminate network possible issues from, you know, setup to setup, but, and, and give it to us for free as well. I don't know, maybe they're trying to push virtual desktop, you know, out the out the window there. I don't know. And it because it gets weird because you know it was only what a month or so ago, maybe two, that they allowed virtual desktop to be in the Oculus store, whereas previously it wasn't. And then all of a sudden, a few weeks later or a month or two later, they released their own version that does essentially the same thing, or the primary task that we all use virtual desktop for. Very interesting strategy. But um, I mean it's all good for us. As, uh, as VR players, we get to choose, we can use virtual desktop, about 15, 16 quid, or we can use AirLink for free. Um, you know, we've got, it's always good to have options. But that's my experience over my four or so hours of testing across different titles, going back to back. I think I'll be using AirLink for the reasons I've listed. But yeah, let me know what you lot think about this. Um, it's always good to see other people's opinions. So thank you very much for watching, and as always, take it easy.